to our floor show traders. You know, me thinks, guys, he means the U.S. Yeah. when he says mature and developed uh, countries. But Tom Dalio said to buy higher returning non-debt investment assets, and he calls them stuff. What stuff are you buying right now that fits into that category? Well, I, Liz, I agree with Mr. Dalio. It makes less sense to own bonds here. But on the equity side, I prefer pockets of the U.S. market versus China for a few reasons. China has aging demographics due to the one China policy from 1979 to 2015. They're going to look more like Japan moving forward. We have a dynamic population. We've got the millennials now are bigger than the boomers. They're starting housing formation. I want to own the U.S. We've done more stimulus, $2.8 this year alone. They're pulling back on stimulus. They're going to have a tightening environment towards the end of the year. We're just going to be having liftoff. So looking at tomorrow with Chair Powell, uh, inflation break-evens, five-year break-evens are 2.51 percent. And uh, the last time that happened in 2011, they hit 2.45 percent. The Fed started uh, talking about Operation Twist. A few months later, they did it. So we're going to see tomorrow if Chair Powell acknowledges inflation risk and talks about options. If he talks about options, you're actually going to get a bid in bonds, interestingly enough, and in high-yielding equities that yield more than the 10-year. We've talked about utilities and staples in recent weeks on your show. They're all up now, 5 to 10 percent plus. We think Big Pharma is next. They yield double the 10-year yield. We like Pfizer, Novartis, and Merck. And not only do they have high yields between 3.5 to 4.5 percent, they're trading at 13 times earnings versus the S&P at 22 times earnings. We like that bargain, yeah, Liz. And all, uh, all the big names are higher in pharma land. Scott Bauer, talk to me about what you see as, in, in Ray Dalio's words, stuff that actually gives you a much better return than bonds. Sure. And, you know, who might argue with Ray Dalio? However, I agree with Tom. U.S., there's still a lot of upside here. And so what I'm looking at, Liz, in this environment, it is very, very difficult to pick an individual stock, let alone a sector. But I really like, even with the little bit of run-up that we've had over the last week and a half, I love the NASDAQ space, the QQQ, the triple Qs. That's where I would put my money because you're really looking at the entire sector as opposed to just an individual stock or two. So that's one place that I would look for a nice run-up, even if, even if rates continue to just kind of grind higher. Also, in the U.S., the cannabis sector. And there's a great ETF, again, so that you don't have to just choose an individual stock. The MSOS ETF is a U.S.-based cannabis ETF. I firmly, firmly believe that the tip of the iceberg is really just here for the recreational marijuana, the recreational cannabis, you know, boom that we are seeing here. Tons of growth. And so those are two sectors in specific where you can be U.S.-based, mm -hmm. And, and really like the upside. Thirdly, lastly here on a more macro basis, I'd be a buyer of volatility in the marketplace, whether that's in the VIX or maybe in the vol -Q, ah. because volatility is way too cheap. Okay, well, volatility is low right now. The fear index is only yep. at 19.9. Uh, maybe that'll all change tomorrow during this hour when Jay Powell of the Federal Reserve explains what he's thinking when it comes to rates. Tom Scott, good to see you.